Hi, I'm Dr. Sirisha, Senior Pediatric Hematology, Oncology and BMT Consultant in Rainbow Children's Hospital, Banjara Hills, Hyderabad. Today we are going to discuss about anemia. Anemia is popularly known as low hemoglobin in the body which results in reduced oxygen carrying capacity to body because of which they will have low oxygenation to the tissues and that results in poor development and growth and uh, there are various symptoms to anemia and then various causes. So various symptoms are because of low hemoglobin and low RBC count in the body that results in anemia. You can get into symptoms like tiredness, weakness, breathlessness, easy fatigability, you can't do the work like routine and because of that you also have a reduced performance in, even in the school, reduced scholastic performance, low oxygenation to the brain also can result in headaches and it can also cause sweaty hands and feet so and it can also result in palpitations that is fast heartbeat and you also look pale. So all these are symptoms of uh, anemia. And there are various reasons why anemia can occur to a person. Most common reason is iron deficiency anemia in children especially, so as well as in pregnant ladies. So all over the world if you look at anemia, anemia is a huge burden in the WHO statistics. According to WHO estimation more than 60% of general population is anemic. In developing countries this group mainly constitutes children and pregnant women. So it's a huge number where we need to act and then uh, reduce this burden in the society. So iron deficiency anemia in children uh, most commonly seen between 6 months to 2 years. What are the symptoms? We already spoke. So what are the causes? Mainly it is because of the low dietary intake of iron that can result in the iron deficiency anemia. Other than that, warm infestation in children or silent bleeding in the stools. Sometimes you know silent bleeding also can cause iron deficiency and at times they also get poor maternal stores so which can start early in life like you know early infancy itself they can uh, start off with the anemia. So from mother getting poor maternal stores or diet lacking in iron content or warm infestations or silent bleeding or sometimes rarely absorption defects like celiac disease also can cause iron deficiency anemia. So among them the nutritional cause is more common which is easily treatable. So once we recognize the symptom and then once we know that this is the possible cause we look at blood picture, blood counts, what is hemoglobin percentage, what is the RBC count, how does the smear look like and then various other parameters like red cell indices what we call it as. We look at those parameters, we look at the smear and then do the iron studies also look at like are we missing any other causes. So once we do these all tests then we you can conclude on the other hand clinic iron deficiency anemia also can be clinically easily diagnosable and we can go ahead and start the treatment which is easy to treat. You have to recognize it and start the oral iron supplements which usually you have to take 3 to 4 months. Uh, it takes 2 months to build up the hemoglobin and it takes another 2 months to build up the body iron stores. So that is why you have to go ahead and give the medications for that duration. Other than iron, you also have other factors that results in deficiency anemias. So in the deficiency anemia category, either than iron deficiency anemia, you also have B12 and folic acid that can result in anemia when they are defective in the diet so or low in the diet. So you also have to go ahead and recognize it based on the clinical symptoms that is like you know their dietary habits. So very good nutrition history, diet history is very important. So you take the diet history according to that you, you will come to know is it a nutritional anemia and then you can go ahead and check along with iron, B12 and folic acid and then you can go ahead and supplement them and correct the anemia. So this is a common anemia and treatable anemia and at the same time for children we also have to do periodic deworming. In schools nowadays like majority of them are doing deworming so that you know you can address the worms in the intestines and then that can reduce the burden of iron deficiency anemia in the society. That is one thing and then there are active national programs that are happening. Anemia Mukt Bharat is one active national program that is happening. 
which address the anemia in children as well as in pregnant ladies where we have to go ahead and supplement them actively to reduce the burden of the anemia uh, in this age groups. So, this is one important cause of anemia. What are the other causes of anemia? You also have second category called as hemolytic anemias where the blood is breaking because of which hemoglobin is dropping. So, there are various causes for blood breakage. One is RBC is round in shape and then it has membrane within the RBC it also has chains, it has enzymes, it has iron content, there are various parts. So, if you have defect in the covering or if you have defect in the chains or if you have a defect in the enzymes, red cell can break and result in the hemolytic anemia. So, there are different categories of hemolytic anemia. In them, most commonly known for the general population is thalassemia. We should definitely know about thalassemia because it is a preventable disease. If we recognize antenatally both mother and father are thalassemia carriers, then we can do antenatal testing and then we can prevent the thalassemia major baby taking birth in that family. So, otherwise thalassemia major babies because of the defect in the globin chains, they will have a defective red cell development which can result in the hemolysis that is breakdown of the RBC which can result in anemia and then they because of which they require regular blood transfusions every month which can lead to accumulation of the iron and that can cause various body parts like endocrine glands, heart, liver and other structures going by that it is very very important to prevent the thalassemia and it is a preventable disease. So, other than thalassemia there are other hemolytic disorders like enzyme defects like congenital pyruvate kinase deficiency or G6PT deficiency or membrane defects like hereditary spirocytosis or hereditary liprocytosis this kind of hemolytic anemias are also commonly seen in day to day practice and they all require appropriate treatment according to the situation. Conditions like congenital pyruvate kinase deficiency or thalassemia where they require regular transfusion or transplantable conditions. You can do transplantation and cure them. If the family is motivated and then if there is a suitable donor definitely we can go ahead and do the transplantation and we can cure those disorders. So, this is the second category that is hemolytic anemia and then the third category is bleeding. So, bleeding is generally like you know it is obvious to the parents like when there is a bleeding that is resulting in anemia it is very obvious. However, sometimes bleeding can be silent and it can result in anemia where when anemia is not improving with iron supplementation we always suspect that and we do the tests according to suspicion whether it is a malabsorption or whether it is a silent bleeding or first thing you have to check is compliance. So, this is one category and uh, other than that you also have uh, another important category that is the reduced production, anemia secondary to reduced production where bone marrow is not producing enough of cells, it can be secondary to infiltration of the bone marrow due to abnormal tissue uh, cells like leukemia. So, if you have a blood cancer that can also result in anemia and that will be evident in the other blood cells white cells will be abnormally high and platelets will be low. So, because of which we suspect the infiltrative disorder like acute leukemia and then we diagnose them with the test called as flow cytometry and bone marrow examination and flow cytometry and genetic tests and all we do and then we risk stratify and treat them and then correct the anemia. So, that is anemia secondary to infiltrative disorder, anemia secondary to aplastic anemia. So, or anemia secondary to reduced production like pure red cell aplasia. So, where the red cells are not getting produced enough in the bone marrow. So, in that cases like you know they are transplantable with transplantation we can cure those disorders. Once again you have to see what is the degree of the problem because not all aplastic anemias require transplantation because um, some of them if it is a mild or moderate non-transfusion dependent and they are not inherited or they are not severe idiopathic aplastic anemia variants. At times they may improve on their own which requires follow up. However, that will be guided by the physician. And uh, the other group of conditions is metabolic conditions also can result in anemia. They are rare. So, 
the overall when it comes to anemia it is very important to recognize anemia with the symptoms which i have mentioned in the beginning as pallor tiredness breathlessness palpitations uh, reduced cholestic performance all these things can be symptoms and then when we recognize them we need to go for appropriate testing which is complete blood picture which will tell us whether we are anemic one is clinical examination first the physician will check and then the complete blood picture examination which will tell like you know what kind of anemia it could be and then it may require further investigations and majority of the times we have to treat them with the hematinics that is iron syrups because most of the times as i said it is the iron deficiency anemia and at times we also have to keep in mind other causes like hemolytic anemia variants anemia secondary to reduced production anemia secondary to bleeding or anemia secondary to metabolic disorders all these things will also come into picture however the most common is iron deficiency anemia which is easily treatable preventable controllable condition and there are active national programs to control nutritional anemia thank you